How about this? You guys got sound now? Have we got any sound now? Yeah, now there's sound. Yeah, there's sound now. You got... Oh, my wife has made an appearance here. Excellent. I can hear her on my laptop. So oh, she's, she's running the laptop out there. Great. Sorry about the technical connections, guys. Um, this is the first time this has happened. I don't know why. Uh, must have been my, uh, my connecting cable. Um, let's start this again. Welcome to the Oscars edition of Sundays with Scott. Uh, I'm Scott Monty. Uh, my newsletter comes out every Monday morning from uh it's it's delivered via email so if you want to subscribe it's a business intelligence newsletter gives you everything you need to know to make you more intelligent for the week uh just go over to scottmonty.com and check it out what we usually do is uh cover a couple of previews i rant about a couple of things for a few minutes i have a trivia question and uh, we'll put that up here at the top of the show and I uh, wanted to let you know uh, that if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, feel free to comment as you're doing here. Um, I'll, I'll try to get to as many of the comments as I can, uh, but thank you for being here. So the trivia question this week is Disney Parks made a decision that was very Uber-like. If you're familiar with Uber and the collaborative economy, and you know it's the, uh, it is the uh, on-demand uh, taxi system, the ride-hailing system. What did Disney Parks implement this time that was Uber-like? We'll answer this question as we get toward the end of the show. So the first uh, issue, it should be very uh, familiar to those of you that are joining me here on Facebook Live, and thank you for being here. Oh, Frank, you've got it already. You are a, you are a master, Frank. That's awesome. Hey, Wolfman, good to see you. Um, and John Walters got it too. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll uh, get into it in detail at the end of the show. Um, if you're joining me on Facebook, you should probably be familiar with the changes that Facebook made this week with regard to reactions. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw that come through either on your mobile device or on the web. Uh, if you hold down that like button now, you'll see six different options come up. Like, love, haha, wow, sad, and angry. So there's a, a, there's a range of emotions that Facebook is giving us to, uh, to, to hit that, or to respond to, to friends with. And I wanted to see what you thought of that. Uh, Steve Garfield says like. Um, I've, I've seen some mixed reactions. Uh, a lot of people said uh, that vaunted dislike button that they had been seeking for uh, a long time didn't appear. And it doesn't look like it's going to make an appearance. Um, other folks I've seen said that um, it's actually going to um, debase uh, conversation. It's going to devalue comments. You know, if you can, if you have a range of well, six different things, big whoop, uh, that you can choose from now. That digital grunt has a, a, a six-fold increase in its range, and yet it still doesn't replace actually being able to communicate with someone and leave a little, a little more. Well, discernible commentary. However, I think it's very interesting in terms of where Facebook can potentially go for advertising uh, and for targeting. You know, as they get better at collecting data, they're going to see a, a, a wider range of things that we respond to. They're going to understand that how we as humans interact with content, interact with each other, interact with brands. And that down the road could help them get smarter about delivering the content that really matters to us. And Christian raises a great point, sentiment analysis on trending topics, right? I mean, this isn't really new. I mean, we've seen this kind of reaction on BuzzFeed for a long time, uh, where people are asked to rate particular uh, pieces of content, different articles and whatnot. Um, so it's, it's not that unfamiliar a situation, but it'll be interesting to see how Facebook at scale with 1.5 billion people, 1.6 billion people now, manages to put this kind of data to use. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, if you're just joining, um, I, uh, I, I had a trivia question at the beginning of the show, which a couple of people already guessed. Good for them. Uh, and it was, uh, what is Disney in its, uh, in its parks? What's Disney implementing that makes it more Uber-like as it moves along here? So let's check that out. I also had a couple of other things here I wanted to talk about. There was a study done on uh, reputation management. Uh, hey, Amanda, 
Mr. McGinnis, glad to see you here. Um, <laughs> Frank, that big whoop, uh, yeah, it does give away my East Coast roots. Thanks very much. Uh, but if you're just joining, thank you for being here. Welcome to the Oscars edition of Sundays with Scott. Uh, in tomorrow's newsletter in the full Monty, we'll be talking about corporate reputation and what companies do that truly damage their reputation. What do consumers view as the most damaging? Uh, there were a number of different things selected. Uh, the number one thing that companies can do to damage their reputation, it's actually a, a two-way tie for first place. One is lying or misrepresenting the facts about a product or service. Right? If you think about what Volkswagen has done recently, that's, that is number one. If you lie about how your product actually performs. The other thing is intentional wrongdoing or illegal actions by company leaders. Um, obviously, no one wants to uh, take part in a business that is uh, doing things illegally and intentionally doing things illegally. So those are tied. 80% uh, of people find that that is very or extremely damaging to a company's reputation. Second place is a security or data breach that exposes personal information. You know, this is more important now as people look toward, um, you know, ha toward privacy, toward security. You know, we're seeing that as the fight continues to go on with, um, uh, with Apple and the FBI, people are concerned about this. So if there is a data breach, that's a corporate reputation damage as well. Um, the third thing that people uh, think damages corporate reputations are product recalls due to contamination that can cause illness. So, so think Chipotle and everything they've been going through, right? 66% of people find that extremely damaging. And then there's two more I wanted to focus on. One is unfair workplace conditions and culture. 64% of people find that very damaging to a company's reputation. And way down at 37%, employee conduct that reflects poorly on the company. That's one of the bottom selections. But the reason I call this out is because uh, of what happened recently with Yelp. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm just looking over the comments here. Ward Hamilton, glad to see you're here. My friend from Connecticut. Um, Mom asks what I'm nominated for. Eric Powell says nominated for the best lamp uh, in the background, best bow ties. Uh, Courtney says that's great. Really, uh, I, I really have to give thanks to my hair and makeup people tonight. Uh, without them, uh, it would be a train wreck. So, uh, you know, count your lucky stars. Um, but with Yelp, uh, I don't know if you saw this last week. This was our trivia question last week, actually. Yelp fired an employee who basically gave them a poor review online. She wrote a 4,000 word uh, blog post about all of the things that were wrong with working for Yelp and why she wasn't getting enough uh, pay and how she could barely feed herself and on and on and on. And there were, as you can imagine, there were various reactions there. First of all, Yelp fired her and there were some visceral reactions to that. But then there were people that came out to take this young woman to task for basically complaining online. And then there were, this, it, got, it got so meta, there were then uh, posts that took those people to task for taking her to task. And it, you know, it just, it, it was just a, a log jam of criticism because, you know, it's the internet. Um, but the bottom line is you've got a company that appears, according to this woman, to have unfavorable work conditions. And you've got this employee whose conduct may be less than becoming. So on the one hand, you've got 64% of people viewing her claims about Yelp as damaging to the company. And you've got 37% of people thinking of, you know, having a, uh, having a person here who is, um, you know, whining and complaining, as some people have said, reflecting poorly on the company. So her claim against the company is actually more damaging than her behavior itself. Whether or not it's true, you know, it's out there. And yeah, I know, Courtney, irony detector, right? Negative review against a review company. Um, it's not clear as to um, what this is going to do long term, how it's going to affect people's view of Yelp as a business, but it puts them in a really interesting light. Anyway, getting back to the trivia question, Disney Parks did something this week that puts it uh, along the lines of, of um of Uber. What is it? A few people um, answered it earlier in the show. They actually, they actually implemented surge pricing, 
right? So this means that if you go to Disney, um, say on uh, the weekends in July, in December, or during uh, spring break periods, you're going to pay more. I think the, the average ticket cost right now is $99. The surge pricing during those, those high, those peak times is going to be $119 a person. Alternatively, if you go on weekdays, Monday through Thursday, during um, non-peak seasons, the price is going to be discounted by just $4. So you'll pay $95 instead. Um, what do you think of that? Do you think that, uh, you know, Disney is, uh, is unnecessarily giving it to people, sticking it to people? Or do you think that this is a necessary move in terms of supply and demand? Classic economics. It's how airlines behave. It's how hotels behave. And let's face it, you don't want to wait in long lines at Disney if they can actually keep more people out by raising the price. Uh, that is one way to control the crowd. So we'll see about that. We'll see. Uh, just a couple of comments in on the Yelp thing. Amanda says, uh, it has so much to do with how it was handled. I think you're absolutely right there. And, and, and Yelp's response, you know, was to immediately fire her. And their public response wasn't really that warm and fuzzy either. Uh, Richard says, great example of the increased attention companies are paying to Glassdoor reviews. If you don't know about Glassdoor.com, it's a great resource for um, understanding how companies are perceived uh, by getting reviews from existing and former employees. And companies have an opportunity to participate there just like they do on LinkedIn and other sites. So uh, it is something to watch out for. Anyway, uh, I know the Oscars uh, continue to go on and you're very kind to be here, so thank you. Uh, if you've been here the whole time, thank you for uh, sticking with me through my, my uh, glitch, my, uh, my sound glitch. Um, I will see you uh, on the internet, as we always do. And if you don't yet, please subscribe to uh, the newsletter at scottmonty.com. And uh, like I said, see you on the internet. Take care.